five and a half years was a prisoner of war of the Vietnamese. Colonel Lee Ellis, who not only survived the experience, but rather than just living through it, learned from the experience. And he's joining us to share what was it like going through Christmas as a prisoner of war, not just being away from family at Christmas time, but with those experiences and lessons that he learned for America. Colonel Ellis, so good to have you with us, and I'm honored to visit with you. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for what you've done for the country. Well, thank you, Congressman, and likewise, thank you for what you've done and what you're still doing. I appreciate that, and it's good to be with you today. Well, good to be with you. Tell us tell us what it's, uh, what it's like. First of all, I mean, when you were just on active duty and away from your family at Christmas time, there are certain sensations that come with that. And then when you were a prisoner of war during holidays, was it much different from the other terrible days when you were a POW? Well, it was different. Uh, obviously, you know, there are so many memories and things associated with Christmas, and it highlights the fact that you're not home, that things are not right, uh, that you're kind of in the armpit of the world, so to speak, and being in a POW camp. Uh, there was a, a there was typically a, a day or two or three let up in the stress uh, that was going on in the camp, the torture and that sort of thing. Uh, they tried to to make a propaganda event out of it. Uh, I know you have some experience in studying propaganda. Well, we got firsthand experience every day in what that was about. But uh, they were always looking for an opportunity, so we had to be on our guard at Christmas. They might they would typically have a special meal. And uh, they would come in days ahead of several days ahead of time and say, "Are you preparing for Christmas?" My first Christmas there in Hanoi, and I had no idea what they're going to do because I I knew the communists hated uh, Christianity, so uh, I didn't know what preparing for Christmas might mean. Might mean, but uh, it was uh, it, as it turned out, it was a propaganda thing. We had a special meal, and not in my area, but in another area, they had it all laid out on the table. And when the guys came in to pick it up, it was a photo op, and the cameraman stepped from behind the wall and took some pictures, and that became how the POWs were being treated for the rest of the world. Of course, that was not true. And in my case, uh, it was a little bit special. Uh, I had a piece of uh, not well-cooked uh, buffalo meat, and, uh, and that was about it. But uh you know, thinking about home and Christmas, and it was just, it kind of added to the sadness, but it also took me back to my basic roots of what Christmas was all about and a time to really reflect on the, the gift that God had given us at Christmas. Absolutely. Now, uh, Colonel Lee Ellis is, is joining us, uh, retired from the U.S. Air Force, prisoner of war of the North Vietnamese for five and a half years. How about just the, the ability to to have some time with your fellow POWs. I realize that there were differing degrees of uh, isolation or the chance to, mm-hmm. to be together, to have have a little bit of, of, of human company. How was that at Christmas time there at the Hanoi Hilton or other places where they had you? Yeah, that was uh, special if you had a, a cellmate, roommate. We call it roommate, but it was a cellmate. And in my particular case, uh, because of the time I arrived there and the situation in the camp, I did have uh, my first Christmas. I had three of the guys in the cell. It was a six and a half by nine foot cell, you know, about like a very, very small closet, walk in closet. But uh, there were still some people in, in solitary confinement and isolation, and that was, uh, you know, that was a more difficult time for them. We always uh, did everything possible to communicate covertly. We couldn't communicate. Uh, openly up there because they tried to isolate us, to divide us so that we couldn't have a military team. But we had covert communication, and we would take great risks to try to reach uh, people alone, and especially during the holiday times when they were alone because we knew that was a lot harder. So uh, for me, having a couple guys that I could talk to, actually three guys that I could talk to that first Christmas about Christmas and just kind of 
share those uh, memories and what we would be doing if we were back home and what we might have to eat and what was special in our family and tradition. Uh, that meant a lot and kind of helped us keep it alive. I think the thing that was hardest for most of us was just thinking about our family, not knowing where we were, whether we were alive or not, not knowing uh, what was happening to us, and for them to have to go through Christmas. I think the families always suffer the most. Now, c- compare the, the experience, I mean, now, uh, today, of course, people, and I realize these are not prisoners of war, but people who are serving the U.S. military, for example, in, in Afghanistan mm-hmm. or other places in the Mideast, uh, I had a, a, a video Skype uh, conversation with a friend just last week who is in Afghanistan, and, you know, to actually have, you know, a video conversation, very different from what could be done at that time, much less as a, a prisoner of war. How how does this isolation factor still be, how is it still significant today for the people who are serving in our military who are away from family, but still there are degrees of difference? Well, it's still a sacrifice. Anytime you're away from your family on a holiday, uh, anytime you're away from your family, there's some degree of sacrifice. But then as the time extends longer and longer and then you're away at a holiday, it makes it much harder. And I think, uh, you know, for me, uh, the military, we're pretty, we're well trained for that sort of thing. It's just part of who we are. We, we work 24-7, 365 days a year. We know that duty always comes first and our families know that. But I think the children quite often don't, uh, understand that. It's harder for them. And of course, uh, emotionally, it's hard for the spouses to be there without their mate at Christmas time to, to be there with the children or just with each other. So, but I think the military is probably better prepared to handle that than others. Having these uh, new things like Skype, though, I think is really huge. When you can connect, communicate, and especially when you can see the face and the uh, facial expressions and body language, you know, that's a lot, a big part of communication is in body language. So being able to do that by Skype and similar means, I think, is very, very important. And it able, enables you to feel like you're there even when you're really not. And, Colonel Ellis, you not only survived your experience as a POW in Vietnam, but you have taken lessons from that that you speak about and you use to train people. What what lessons did you extract from your horrible experience that America needs to learn today? Well, there there are a number of lessons that I've outlined in my book, but I think probably the most important one right now for America today is that we have to have courage. Uh, I'm just seeing a lack of courage in every direction. And as a leadership consultant and coach, the courage is a lack of courage is the thing I see that gets in the way the most of good leadership because people opt out of making the best decision and the right decision sometimes out of fear. So I would say confront your doubts and fears to do the right thing is the most important lesson for Americans today. We can't just give in. We all have fears. We all have doubts. But we have to say, what is the right thing to do? What is my duty? What is my responsibility? And then figure out a way to go do it. If we'll do that, that will take care of most of the problems in our country today. Of course, that's that's part of character. Courage and character are very closely aligned because you can't have good character without courage uh, because they're hard decisions that it requires to keep your character. Absolutely. Well, Colonel Ellis, thank you so much for joining us. His book is Leading with Honor. Colonel Lee Ellis, uh, thank you for your service, and I hope you and all of your loved ones have a fantastic Christmas. Well, thank you, Congressman. The same to you and to all our friends listening today. God bless. God bless you. Colonel Lee Ellis uh, served in the United States Air Force uh, five and a half years, a captive in the Hanoi uh, Hilton there. And, you know, you've just got you've just got to appreciate your blessings when you hear about uh, the things that people go through and experience. And, uh, you know, you just have to read their books. And uh, I know I served with uh, a U.S. congressman, Sam Johnson, who was a POW. And uh, I, I, I know the experience he went through, how his body was crippled from that. And just the things that people have experienced and they have sacrificed for us here in the United States of America. And if you've got somebody who's serving overseas now, 
I hope you're doing something special for them at this Christmas time.